Okay guys, welcome, and I'm excited to actually uh, bring on a new guest uh, for a little recorded tutorial today. Uh, Alexander actually has some interesting de descriptions and designs for some best practices and kind of how to um, use some scripts to basically pimp out the Power BI data model and improve it in a lot of different ways. So i uh, excited to always bring new people on and also just see some of the, the ways that we can um, do increase our efficiency and automate some of this stuff for uh, for anything around best practices. Uh, with that being said, I'll hand it off to you uh, for a little bit of an introduction and then to talk about what we will be getting into for the demo. Thanks a lot, Reed. I'm super excited today to show you my Power BI PIP script. I'm sure it will help a lot of people, I hope. Um, but before I start, let's go into a uh, short about me. Okay. So my name is Alexander Korn, and I'm part of the Heiko group. Um, shoot out to my employer, who allowed me to put actually put in some quite some time into the development of this free and open source tool for you for the community. Uh, by the way, my employer share a passion with me. That is first of all obviously Power BI, and secondly IVCS, uh, which is for me the most complete best practices for conveying insights. Um, if you want to know more about that, head over to IVCS or actionablereporting.com. That's my blog. Um, yeah, but before we can convey insights, obviously we need a as a basis a robust data model, and that's why we're talking today. Um, and how to optimize and automate the whole thing. So if you have worked with Power BI and you know what you're doing, um, you also know that setting up a great data model obviously takes quite some time. And maybe you have caught yourself, or at least myself, I've caught myself that I have left out some of those best practices, even though I, I knew I should implement them, but I just didn't have enough time uh, to implement them uh, always and all of them. And mm -hmm. I thought, hey, this needs to be a thing of the past and there must be some way to automate made it. That way we're not seeing those bad data models anymore. Um, and that's why I created this PIM script in hope to automate the process. So what are those best practices um, available with the script? Most obvious one probably is you're all aware of is a calendar table. Um, so every fact table has a date column. Therefore, we all so should have a calendar date dimension. Um, and also the script marks it then as a date, uh, as a calendar table. Secondly, if you have a date dimension, calendar dimension, then you can also implement a calculation group for time int intelligence. So why is this important for insights? Because deviations are key, and if you don't have a plan or a target value, at least have the comparison to a previous period. Mm -hmm. And there's also kind of calculation in this time intelligence calculation group, which you can which you can also reuse uh, as as a as a guideline for your other uh, measures which you might implement. If we're talking about measures, then there's also a last refresh every table probably has, at least if it's import mode, um, then put on the bottom right or wherever you have that located, maybe not as big as in my example, but put a timestamp and uh, for the last refresh. And that includes also the naming last refresh most probably, therefore you will have not only the table with a timestamp, maybe also a measure. Talking about measures, there is an empty measure table, how I like to call it. It's a container for your measures and a table yep. by itself contains um, not that much. Uh, there's no data in the empty, in, in the table. Um, for me, there's not really a point of having fact tables. Um, so in the fact tables, we have either uh, keys or IDs, and then we have also the value columns. And um, then if if there's still attributes in it, then it's kind of a dimension. So that's why I say there you can hide all of your um, fact tables and have all the measures mm -hmm. as explicit measures in your empty measure table. If you want, you can even have multiple uh, measure tables, um, but best practice is also to structure your KPIs, your, your measures in subfolders or display folders. Yep. 
agree. Uh, cool. And then there is um, also as part of the script, you obviously need to add explicit measures. Um, and I reused a script from Tom, Tom Martins um, who, as a basis, mm -hmm. and he actually uses the aggregation defined already. So you, if you, for example, for unit price, that might be average or not, not some. So that's that's what you manually need to modify. And but there's also other value columns like ID or key columns. So the script also searches for ID or key and then already marks the summarized by to none. So that's why the script does not add the explicit measures for those columns. And the others are probably, probably if they are not IDs, um, then they are at least text, and then they will also not be added as explicit mm -hmm. measures. And if you have an existing model, or if you have um, that many uh, new measures, then um, you want to format also your measures in a way that it's re readable and be aware that if you apply it in the script, that it's going to uh, format potentially a lot of measures if you choose that option. I'm using here a calculated column, by the way, those should probably not exist either way uh, um, and should be done in Power Query, uh, the calculated columns. I know I also do those, but uh, <laughs> maybe it's sometimes better to move it to the back end. If we have that many um, measures, I also added a calculation group for units. So then you can change your, all your uh, visualizations uh, in million or thousand formatting or just a number. And one last thing, there's definitely lots of best practices missing. So that's why I also added a best practice analyzer. I think that's super cool. And there's a script where you get the best practice analyzer into your tabular editor. Um, and if you have not done it that already, script will also does that for you. Oh, yeah. So I would head over to my demo now and to show it actually mm -hmm. how that, that that's in practice. So I'm opening Power BI Desktop and here I have just one order table and then I also have a tabular editor. Mm -hmm. And as a first step, I need to connect to um, the Power BI desktop model. And here I ha just have the table and then I need to add the C sharp, sharp script or the macro, how it's, how it's called. And you can go to my GitHub and copy paste it from there. And then if you already have saved it, you can even um, load it in and here are some variables which you also can define, but the majority of the variables are is within the script. So um, uh, don't worry about that too much. Um, so just run the script. And if I run now the script, it will actually check that adding tables is not successful because currently that's one limitation that write operations are not possible against the local instance of uh, Power BI Desktop. That's why it's telling me, hey, table adding will not be successful now. Just will be able to add uh, like the uh, time intelligence calculation group. That's why we are doing now uh, stopping this process um, and then saving it locally. Okay. And then reopening the file. And then we apply the changes against the local BIM model. And then Okay. It will ask a series of questions, all the things we just discussed. So empty measure table and uh, setting the aggregation to none for the key columns and then adding the explicit measures, add a last refresh table, add the data dimension, and then That's also- That's how it's able to add all those in. Okay, so just a couple extra yeah. steps, but then it's able to add, uh, add those um, into the model itself by merging basically. Okay. Yeah, you can actually say, okay, I don't want to add this step um, and then it will just run fine. But uh, all the steps here uh, we, we discussed previously. Um, and then it will summarize in the end what you just decided on, uh, all mm -hmm. the things which were added. And then, um, we press OK, and then immediately it's added. Bam. So that's super cool for me. To finalize the process, um, we need to save. And then 
go back to uh, the Power BI desktop file and then save it as PBIP, as project file. And then go back to uh, the model.bin and then replace mm -hmm. the dataset file here. Um, yes. And then reopen Power BI desktop, the file we just changed, the PBIP. And then in the end, you can then save it back as PBIX, um, but all the changes are now applied, even the change yeah. of the tables and adding the tables. So that's currently a workaround, uh, but I, I have an idea um, uh, already, which I can share where you can vote for. And then Rui Romano already stated, hey, that's on the roadmap to also be able to change tables yep. and add tables, but there is no timing yet. So uh, once that actually is possible, the whole process will be even smoother and you don't have to go to work around with the BIM locally and um, also with yeah, the, uh, the, the PBIP. And then we just need to refresh also that the last refresh table is added. So, and then everything is optimized. Oh, that's very cool. Um, yeah. So the process here very quickly was new file and then connect with tabular editor and then save and reopen locally, execute the script, and then the workaround with the project folder. And then lastly, reopen the whole file. So like I said, Firstly, firstly, please vote for the idea that we get some track on that. <laughs> Secondly, please yes. ping me via LinkedIn. If you have any questions or read or whoever, if you have any ideas for the next version, I would be more than happy to add those best practices and let's make it better together. Reed, what do you think about the script and the whole process and best practices? I mean, it's it does a lot of what I already do today. I mean, I've, you know, for, for years I've used a, um, a metrics uh, I call it a metrics folder, um, just because I, I find that not a lot of report um, self-service report builders don't know what DAX is, but they understand metrics or calculations. Sadly, we can't use measures because that's a reserve name, but whatever you call it, it's good to have a top level folder to organize your calculations, separate logic from physical columns, um, having the date fields. So it's you know, honestly, anything that you just need to do over and over again as a pattern um, is really useful. And, you know, in, in, I'd say in a in a perfect world, the the thing that I typically will give to clients is never start from a brand new Power BI desktop file. Have a template file that already has your calendars, your hierarchies, everything in it. It's it's it has the theme file and it's pre built. Um, and if you can start net new with one of those, that's great. But you also often have a lot of legacy reports that haven't been built with all of that. So scripts like this come in handy because yes, you can't start from a brand new file, but you at least can take something that has been built by somebody else and you can very quickly upgrade it to add a lot of these typical um, best practices, um, but also the you know the, the starter kit aggregations, you know any of the the items that you just showed with uh, the the time intelligence tables um, and all that. So I think it just goes a long way to save time, um, which end of the day is any developer uh, would appreciate being able to do. So uh, I really like this and. Um, I'll flip yeah. back over here to I, us so we can... Oh, go ahead, if you had a few other Reed, things. I have one added, added bonus. Uh, so uh, definitely, you mentioned also the theme, and there I definitely recommend to add the background also to the theme. That way you don't have to add the background to each page. Uh, you just yep. can go into your Power BI desktop and use a SVG image, and, yes. and then it will go super fast also adding those um in so that that's my tip uh, for for the design theme beside having all the standards and everything and then whenever you have nice. additional pages that will be picked up automatically um yeah very cool yeah i mean same, same thing i've uh it's good to see this uh, also done in the theme files that you do i know that um mike carlo over at uh, power bi tips uh, with him and seth they have that template theme generator that also can put those in, but it, it's just all time saving, right? Like anything that just lets you create more out of the box solutions, um, especially that fits to, to a standardization of either modeling practices or reporting practices that helps the company all kind of match on how they, they build their reports and models. So very happy to, to see more things like this and encouraging people to use tabular editor, which 
you know, is, is it's just the best modeling tool that we have, uh, either with Tabular Editor 2, which this can still be done with a free version, um, or people, you know, want the, to use Tabular Editor 3 with all the extra bells and whistles for a few dollars a month, um, that version's available as well, too. But uh, I think this has been great. Let me, let me flip over to our main screen here um, as we close up. But uh, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to be able to bring you on and get, give you a chance to, to share this with the community and give them one more tool in their tool belt. I was so happy to be here. Thanks a lot, Reed, for letting me show the script. Uh, I hope that some of you guys out there are going to take this script further, develop your own version, maybe your own Power Query script, and then let me know that you did even further steps. I think there's lots of things how you can improve that even further and be even faster altogether. Absolutely, yeah. And um, hopefully get you back on sometime for a recording or even a live stream. So um, until next time, and everyone, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. Plus, if you have any comments for a future video, go ahead and add that to the comment section down below. Now, if this is your first time to my channel or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. Also, feel free to show your support by becoming a channel member.